and that not only supports the author and her great work, but it also supports your local independent bookstore. So it's a really good thing to do in the world and it ships right to your house. Um, so without spending a bunch more time, I wanna talk about our people who are here tonight, our illustrious panelists. Our interview for this evening is Sia. She is the nine time Grammy nominated artist who released the Grammy nominated <laughs> voice of acting to critical acclaim in 2016. And has cemented her role as one of today's biggest stars and sought after live performers. She is one of the most stream artists in the world and has amassed over 5.3 billion plays on her YouTube channel. Along with her own successes, Sia has written global smashes for today's biggest acts, including Beyonce, Kanye West, Rihanna, Britney Spears, Katy Perry, Zayn, and many more. In 2010, LSD, the pop supergroup formed with Labyrinth and Diplo, released their EP, Welcome to the World of, and her forthcoming motion picture directorial debut, Music, will see released in 2020. So she's going to be speaking tonight with our featured author, Jennifer Finney Boylan. She's the author of 15 books and is the inaugural Anna Quinlan writer in residence in Barnard College of Columbia University. Her column, Men and Women, appears on the op-ed page of the New York Times on alternate Wednesdays. She serves on the board of trustees of PEN America, and from 2011 to 2018, she served on the board of directors of GLAAD and also provided counsel for the TV series Transparent and I Am Kate. Her 2003 memoir, She's Not There, A Life in Two Genders, was the first best-selling work by a transgender American. A novelist, memoirist, and short story writer, she's also a nationally known advocate for human rights. She lives in New York City and in Maine, where she is right now with her wife and two children. Her new book, Good Boy, explores her growing understanding of friendship, relationships, and gender identity across seven stages of life as reflected in the dogs who are there each step of the way. So Jennifer and Sia are gonna talk about the book and the dogs and men and women and all kinds of stuff. So thank you guys so much for being here and take it away. Hi, Sia. Hi, sweetie pups. How are you doing? Oh, I, I was born to be isolated, but- I, I don't think that's true. I, I live, for it. I was living like this before the pandemic. But really no, no change at all. No change at all. Obviously, I feel really bummed and um, for the people that aren't earning and for anyone who's lost loved ones and all that sort of stuff. But um, I, w I felt so guilty because I'm so good at this and that I'm just thriving. Um, being alone here that I donated a million dollars <laughs> to a COVID charity to core because I I was uh, I felt I'm I like it I love this I now I don't have to feel like I'm mentally ill or um, to just stay in bed and watch television all day with my dogs now I feel like it, I'm being I've, it's been commanded of me by you know, the government. <laughs> well, as, as a creative person, are you finding it harder or easier to, 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 to make art, to make music right now? Are you thinking about that at all? Yeah, I mean, like... I know a lot of people are struggling. It's really hard to, to, to concentrate. I know a lot of people who can't even hold a single thought in their head for more than 30 seconds. Wow, that's not me. Um, I guess maybe I'm because I also don't read the I don't read the news. I mean, I do accidentally get Spectrum um, news on when I'm trying to watch crappy, shitty reality TV. Um, I'll get the news by accident, and so I know you know uh, the basics of what's going on. But I tend not to um, gravitate towards fear. Um, I, it, I I'd rather you know um, live in a magical world where everything's going to be okay and um, I'll do what I can to help, but. Yeah, well, what's, whatever. A good, what's a good antidote to fear right now? I mean, in me, for me as a writer, um, I, I find telling stories is really good. I find um, listening to music is really helpful, including mm -hmm. yours. But I, I, there are also other times when it's just, you know, you just, you know, you just really kind of struggle a little bit. What, what's helping you? I mean, I know, I think you and I have both struggled with being sad at various times in her life and yeah, i just came out of a massive massive depression so i shot a movie um which i wrote and directed um and um which is coming out like september is that right i think sometime around there august september we're I, we're going to announce on um uh on the i think on the 20th we're going to announce when it's coming out um oh the suspense <laughs> but after that, the editing part of it, I made me sick, or 
it, I couldn't, I was so scared that I was going to put out something that was mediocre and not exceptional that I started to get sick and fearful because I was like, I'm Thea, I have to put out something perfect and, a, 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 and like spectacular. Um, you know, and there were times where I was like, I'll just put it back on the shelf and I'll pay them back the money that I borrowed to, ma right. to make the movie. Um, and, but finally I got it to a place where I feel like it's now, it's a very beautiful, very good, may, possibly exceptional movie, but it made me really sick. And um, uh, uh, I think it was also, I'd just gotten div uh, divorced and, and so making the movie was the best thing to happen, but the editing portion, I mean, I, I hit, really rock bottom um f for about the last three years and i've just been coming through it i've been doing loads of attachment repair work and also ptsd stuff and emdr and um uh and and i took a like i chose to just stay at home and yeah. just stay in bed and watch television but the opposite of, of fear to me is faith so um you know i'm just like i i'm not um it, I'm not into any particular religion, but I just, I think it's fun if you can just choose a higher power, even if you'd want to call it like Galaga or Hocus Pocus or, um, you know, dogs or uh, the oh, universe. Yeah. So you can just hand it over to them and just have faith that, that everything's going to be, that it's going to be okay. That to me is the antidote of fear. But, yeah. but also sure. I yeah, have to take medication. I'm on like a really high dose of Prozac. So that's why I'm in such great spirits too, I'm sure. <laughs> Without chemicals, life itself would be impossible. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so you said you were lying in bed with your dogs. Tell me about your dogs, yeah? Ah, they're right you here. Say dogs? Yeah, there's one right here I can show you. That's, oops, can you see him? He's chewing, that's Dingus. Uh, you have to move. Oh, wait, there we go. Yeah, it's just his butt you can see. But anyway, that's Dingus. <laughs> and um, and then I've got Floopy somewhere. And then I have Cereal somewhere too. So I, my, two of my dogs passed recently, and that was really heartbreaking. Um, Floopy, but, Dingus, and Cereal? Yeah, that's their names. Um, so they're the – I immediately went – unlike other people, I, I just – the day after I went and uh, my dogs died, I went and got another one because I just think I have this, this room in my heart and I, I would, don't want dogs to be in the pound. I hate it. I hate that there's so much euthanasia. I hate that there's so much lack of knowledge about spay and neutering. And I really love dogs. I love dogs. You know, I, I think, so this new book of mine, of course, is um, about, about the dogs and that book. Viewers I, at home is called Good Boy, and one of the places you can buy it is from Greenlight, um, Greenlight Books, which yeah, is what, what made you want to do Zoom. that? So, what, made, what, what made you want to write this book? Well, it's kind of the thing you were just talking about the idea that, um, well, there are two things about dogs that are dogs give us a way of talking about love, mm -hmm. and they also enable us to talk about loss, mm -hmm. um, and they're. It's funny, if we're here for any reason on the earth at all, we know we are here to love one another. But we also, it's also the thing that we're like the worst at doing. And we're also, we're also bad at talking about it. It's really, we don't have a good language for talking about love. And if you just start talking about it, people roll their eyes and want you to to talk about something else. Um, <laughs> not me. We but, well, about love. <laughs> well, yeah, and not me either. But I think if you talk, if you talk about dogs, there, I think for some people, it's, it's like the door opens. Portal. Yeah, it's the portal. <laughs> the other thing about dogs is that if you, to love a dog, which is almost the same thing as owning one, it also means to lose a dog because they don't live forever. And it's, it's like the saddest thing in the world. And so um, I wanted to write about that as well. Um, so I'm a transgender woman. You've been incredibly supportive of the transgender community. I thought about writing about the time before transition mm -hmm. um, and thinking about the, the seven dogs that I owned back when I had a boyhood. And yeah. I, love, I loved the phrasing of everything. I, I just loved hearing, it was so natural when you said when I was a little boy and it, it, the, it, there was no big deal made of it. That's what I, I personally 
I don't know. I just, I, you really are so wonderful at normalizing um, what's very, very difficult for so many people. Yeah. Well, I think one of the things you have to do is draw a line between who you are and who you were. Mm -hmm. And even if the person that you've been is not someone um, that you can relate to, or maybe you're sad about your past, you still, you should own your past and you should make peace with your past. Yeah. So writing about dogs in Good Boy was a way of writing about, well, it's the seven stages that I had of um, boyhood, being a teenager, being a, you know, a college kid, um, being a hipster, uh, a boyfriend, uh, uh, um, a husband, a father. So all of that. And it just opened a door for me and gave me a chance to, um, to talk about the time before and how it connected to who I am now. Also, the thing about dogs is that they're really funny. They do stuff that we would like to do. Yeah, um, Dingus. You don't get to do. They Dingus can lift themselves called, anywhere. <laughs> Dingus nearly got called Klepto. He said that's his second name. Is um Dingus Klepto Furler because he steals everyone. Any if anyone's here, um, a staff member or anyone is here, he'll steal their underpants or he'll <laughs> eat or their, or their slides or. But there's always something in my room, and he'll drunk plonk, plonk it by my head went to wake me up in the morning. So I'll, I got Kevin, the masseuse's um, sandal by my head this morning. <laughs> Did you grow up with dogs? Uh, I didn't. I was desperate for one, but my mum wanted to protect me from um, the grief of losing one. Well, and, yeah. And, um, but, uh, I mean, I would, I would, buy my, I would, like, rescue my, if I had children, in fact, you know, Maddie, Maddie's, Ziegler is the closest thing to a daughter I have and she's fostering a puppy right now and I encourage her to if she decides to adopt it that I would encourage because I think that they only help you grow emotionally and spiritually and they you grow in compassion that you like you learn how you you would wish to be greeted every day and how you learn how to greet people like more, more excitedly and more, with more delight you greet people in your life and it changes your life because they teach you how to be. Yeah, it's not only, I mean, the dogs, it's an old cliche that dogs love us unconditionally. But what's also true, I think, is that we love them unconditionally. unconditionally. That we, um, and, and I mean, like my father was a very um, quiet man. He was a very stern man. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was not, he didn't express his emotions easily, but we had a dog named Playboy. Yeah, yeah. When I was, yeah, that was the name of the dog, <laughs> a Dalmatian. And he was not, he was, well, they're all good boys, but he was not a particularly good boy. He would chase people on motorcycles. He was, he was mm -hmm. kind of a, I had one of those. A mean dog. But my father adored him. And my father would, um, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I read remember, about you. I read about him in your book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he oh. got, special treatment from your dad oh yeah <laughs> so i mean actually i think each of the dogs that i've had have taught me something different about love like playboy taught me it's okay if a lot of people hate you as long as one person really loves you, <laughs> you <know? laughs> and you know what i say and i heard this once and now i say it to anyone who has a dog or who gets a dog i say if your dog does something wrong roll up a newspaper and hit yourself in the head with it because <laughs> Because it's your fault. It's not the dog's fault. It's, it's, a, never, it's a little bit like having children in that way, isn't it? it yeah, it's never <laughs> the dog's fault. It's that you, you, you did something. It's yours. <laughs> you, you, you had a dog that was like really horny that would just like. Uh huh. I had one called away. Pantera, and he would hump. He humped all these dolls that I got from IKEA that I just put in a room for if I had little friends over, like my friends with their children staying or whatever. Ooh, he loved those IKEA dolls, and they were of all nationalities. There was a white one, um, an Asian one, and a black one. And but he was he was very particular. He preferred the black doll over all the other dolls. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. My grandma. We had a dog that we called Matt the Mutt, and he was like an unknown supposedly he was half dingo i don't believe that but supposedly and he would literally hump anything but his favorite thing in the world was my grandmother's leg and <laughs> my irish grandmother thought it was very funny and she would sit there with her you know her vodka in her, yep. in her hand as he would 
hump away and she would declare with a smile, he's got more spunk than your grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so from 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 that the mud I learned that sometimes the people who are the happiest are the people who are making everyone else around them or making everyone else's lives impossible. Oh, he, that's so funny. I thought you were about to say because for me it's the opposite, is that I surround myself with people who are happy and who I can trust and who I can co regulate with and um and I only hang around people who, uh, after I've spoken with them, I feel better, not worse. It's like one of my rules. Is well, I, would, I agree I, with that, but not yeah. every dog necessarily. <laughs> at, least, at least this one dog that we had, was he was in it for himself. He, he wanted to get to my grandmother's leg, and that was it. He lived for that leg. <laughs> That's awesome. So let me ask you some, um, some other questions, because I know you, you've suffered from depression too, right? Yeah. How are you doing? How are you doing right now? You're nice to ask, Sia. Um, I'm in a house right now with my family. There's five of us here in Maine. So there's my wife, there's my daughter, her fiance, and um, my brother-in-law, whose name is Todd. So there's mm -hmm. five of us, and we're we're all. I mean, it's it's not a small house. I'm lucky to say, but it's it still mm -hmm. feels small because we're just we're all kind of just, you know jammed in together. So every day feels a little bit like a Thanksgiving dinner. You know, right. um, in I a think, good way or a bad way, because obviously some people aren't. Well, in both, in both ways. ways. I mean, we all we all get along fine. Um, right. But you know, there's not a lot of privacy, mm -hmm. and you know, everybody's trying to do something. You know, my daughter and her fiance are trying to do their schoolwork. I'm trying to write. Oh, um, right. You know, we're all we're all we're all working on something, but mostly we're okay. Every now and then, like you know. Like I was going to be on big book tour. I mean, good boy. I've been working on this book for years now, and so today is publication day. Yay! Dogs forever. <laughs> right. um, and you know, I, I I didn't get to travel around and go on book tour and meet people. And it, this is really cool. Uh, in some ways, there are things I really really like about this. Like I don't. I like in some ways not having to leave the house. I to travel. <laughs> Booyah. Yeah. Me too. You know, so it's just, I'm just really worried. I'm worried about the country. I'm worried about people being sick. But how am I doing? I'm mostly okay because I have the people that I love around me. And I've got our dog, whose name is Chloe. Correct. One of my favorite Kardashians. Well, really, you're a, you're a, you're a, Chloe, you're a Chloe Kardashian person. <laughs> I'm the Kardashians, Kardashians person. I love them all. They're all really wonderful people. What I was, when I was on the Caitlyn Jenner show, she was, the, I think she was the I one member of the family that we didn't meet. Um, oh, really? Oh, yeah, because she was having a hard time, not over the fact that um, that he was transition, she was transitioning, um, but yeah. over the other, other stuff. Is she the one who's married? Wait, who's married to Scott Disick? That's Courtney. Oh, Courtney. Okay, I didn't meet her either, And but Scott Disick was around all the time. They gave me Scott Disick. Because uh, Scott was like looking to Caitlin to be like her, you know, yeah. parental surrogate, and Caitlin was not interested in him. So I, I wound up having to cheer up Scott Disick. That was my. Oh, I love Scott too. I love them all, actually. I, you know, people say such shitty things about them, or they're not talented, or they, what are they, what do they do? But they work harder than any of my friends, any that I know, and they're also so protective, so kind, really funny. And, you know, and Chris Jenner. I thought I'd be talking to you about the Kardashians. I know. Here we are, right? I thought we were supposed to talk about dogs. You know, and people are asking, like, why aren't we answering the questions and stuff? Um, and it's because we were just going to have a conversation first and then take questions. And I'm happy to stay for the questions portion, too. Um, well, um, it's wh whenever you would like to go over to the questions. We, I, I just noticed some people were saying, like, why Yeah, I know. Um, uh, I've tried to fit in a couple questions that people were, were curious about. Oh, but, um, you did good. You've been doing uh, multitasking, which is so, <laughs> so subtle. You didn't even notice it. <laughs> really? I I Hi, I'm back. I, I've pulled a couple of questions um, that I've seen asked a couple of times, so I wanted to bring them to you guys. Um, a couple okay. people asked the hard question of how do you how do you deal with the loss of a dog, or how do you how do you bring a dog into your life knowing that you're going to lose them? Personally, yes. for, 
for me, I, uh, I'm, it's not for everybody, but I immediately replaced them. So I was, I was able to grieve, but I also had something, someone totally new to focus on, to learn and to be of service to. And so it helped me feel like, okay, I always imagine my dogs are just in like heaven, like with all the bones and like so many fire hydrants and they're pissing on all of them and they get all the treats and they have all their limbs back or their eye back or they, they had just that they're, everything there is awesome. So that is helpful. But also for me, it was just, it was really just, it sounds um, almost, uh, cold but it actually saved my life getting a new dog immediately because I don't think I think I would have gone into another deep very deep depression if I hadn't you know I'm, I'm I'm different with that when I lose a dog I usually have to go through you know I go through this whole like operatic thing like I'll never get another dog that's mm -hmm. it I'll never love again my, my heart is broken and then you know and it's this whole thing it happens every time and then it's like, I don't know how many, like two months, three months. And um, then I'll hear, you know, the last time we lost a dog, um, a couple weeks went by and then I got this, this, this note from somebody that there was a dog whose owner had died and needed a home. Would we check it out? And I was like, I'm not going to, no, I'm not going to It's like, well, I could just look, <laughs> you know, and that day the dog came home and, and she's still here. She's still here. Chloe? Yeah. Holy Kardashian. Yeah, I'll never forget. <laughs> There's another question that could be for both of you. Um, a couple people have asked, what are your challenges in writing, either right now in particular or like overall with this book or with your with whatever kind of creative work you're doing? Why don't you take this one first, Jenny? Well, of course, I think writing writing music and writing um, writing books is real different. I mean for me as a writer I just believe in in lots and lots of drafts and and when I can't write something good I'll write something that's that's not good and then I then I have something that's not good and yeah. then I rewrite it and I can make it better and then I can take something that's good and I make it really good so I just I just keep getting back in there and I try not to take I, I try not to get upset if it's not perfect the first time out because you know to if you if you make art you get used to the fact, I mean, sometimes you're lucky and it just comes right out of you and there it is. It's the thing, it came from heaven, it's done. But That's usually how it is for me. I, I, I generally don't rewrite anything. I might replace a word or, or something, but, mm -hmm. but right now, you know, I just have lots of producers sending me tracks, just saying like, now would be a great time for us to write a huge hit, like to save the world. <laughs> Um, but I, I am putting out some music real soon, just uh, for free, just, um, and, uh, yeah, and, uh, uh, I, I'm not having any difficulties, it's the same for me as it, writing any other day, um, I'm not actually having any, if once I put my mind to it, I can just listen to a track and then m make a melody, write, and write the lyrics, and usually I'll, it's all, it's all very, um, to take maybe 30 minutes. Wow. I mean, yeah. I think in some ways it's like, you know how people call Zen is a practice or certain things are a practice. For me, like writing, writing is a practice. Like I do it, I do it every day. I generally do it at the same time every day. And I, I just go and I do my work. Okay. And if it's, if I'm, if it's a good day, then some good things come out of it. If it's not a good day, I'll have the next day. I'll have tomorrow. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I think, you know, I, I hit a bum note once, like 15 years ago, <laughs> and I've hit many for since, but I really, I hit one about 15 years ago. And then somebody said to me, that's not what you're gonna be thinking about in 70 years. And so now whenever anything weird or bad happens, uh, I think, is the, am I gonna be thinking about this in 70 years? And I realized, no, I'm gonna be thinking about all of the love that I had in my life and all my best friendships and all the dogs and, you know, um, so maybe uh, for me also dogs probably the opposite of fear i don't know i've been through a couple of earthquakes here and i'm still in the last couple of months and oh, the dogs are just amazing to be with and here we are all still standing yeah 
So here's a question from Jasmine. Jasmine asks, um, Jenny, in your new book, you're visualizing your own journey becoming the person you are today based on seven dogs. Since you and Sia know each other, I wonder how much of your growth she has witnessed and how she experienced it from the outside. So maybe you guys could talk a little bit about how you know each other. Um, well, I found, I was watching the um, uh, Caitlyn Jenner show and um, didn't I, didn't I, I think I just found you the most eloquent and I related to you uh, uh, politically um, and uh, I guess just generally, I just thought you you seemed like a person I would like to be friends with. So I, I tweeted you, I think, right? I think, I think, yeah. And also you had a, well, and I'll, I'll, before I get to that part, I'll just say that for, for me, you were, you know, um, a voice on the radio. You were, I mean, you, I didn't have a, I know this is ironic to say, I didn't have a face to associate with that music. <laughs> uh -huh. But yeah. really it was just, it was a, it was a, like a, a vibration or a, or a sense of, um, a, you know, kind of music that, that gave me hope. And so then suddenly there was this person who was you, who was reaching out to me. And I thought, so there's a, I mean, cause I didn't, I didn't have a sense of you. I had a sense of your music. So yeah. when Similar you, but different. <laughs> yeah, you had a very specific sense of a project you wanted to do to help transgender kids, which I'm not going to go into cause it's, it's a thing Sia did on the down low. And I think she does a lot of this work. I know, I know people who, who know your work aren't, surprised by this but Sia had a kind of quiet project to help trans kids and she wanted to know if I would help um, counsel her and the people that she had working on this project and and so I did and we I went out, I was out in LA one time and we made a very um, quiet arrangement to meet and we met somewhere and we had coffee and it was so cool and then we painted ceramics together and then we painted ceramics together. We did, and and um, <laughs> we made coffee cups. And mine is shaped like um, an octopus. Hey, Didi, my, my wife is here. Didi, can you find that that coffee cup that's getting made? My my wife Didi is going to find the coffee cup. I was say busy Billy Ben Ben. I hope that's a nice thing and not. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a nice. Thing. Um, can I ask you another question while you're getting the octopus cup, which sounds awesome? Yeah. Um, uh, Bianca asks, what process do you both go through to name a dog? My housemate's dog is Woof. Oh. <laughs> I bet I'll, I know why that dog got its name. Wait. I'll take this one. But, uh, I took me the coffee I... cup, by the way. Do you remember this? So, yeah. <laughs> so Sia and I made this together. Um, uh, I painted it blue. I started to paint it black, but then I had to go. She finished painting it black, but the important thing is Sia gave it that red eye. So... <laughs> I do not remember, but I'll ta I take full credit. <laughs> so how well, do you name dogs? Oh, I, I sit with them for a long time until they tell me who they are. So like Dingus was klepto at first, but then he went uh, to a little training camp for two weeks and he didn't steal anything. And so they told me he didn't ever steal anything. So I was like, oh, I can't call him klepto if he's not really a klepto. So I just watched him and his behavior and he is truly the most dingus. Like, so he's such a silly, silly, fun, like he'll play with himself for hours. And he's like, don't, like he thinks he's a lap dog, but he's actually massive. And he's, he'll get wet in the pool and then come and jump on your bed. And like, he, he's just a real dingus. He's a truly a dingus. It's <laughs> a perfect name for him. But he had to tell me who he was. And then same with Floopy. Loopy took a long time. I, like she was a nameless dog for a long time. She came to me. Um, oh, they're all rescues. I only rescue dogs. Um, and um, she came to me as, as as Snowy, and I was just like, no. But it took me so long. I called her Velcro for a little while. So, but then I was like, no, maybe Dingus is even more Velcroy. And then. Eventually, I called her Floopy, and then my best friend Dallas Clayton. He was like, "How about Still Life?" And I was like, "Yes, Floopy Still Life Furlet, because when she's like just sitting, she looks like a perfect still life." Oh wow! Painting. That's, dogs, that's how I do it. They tell me. The last two dogs we've had have come to us. Have they been adopted? Um, and we just kept the, the names that they already had. Mm -hmm. um, and so one, so we have Chloe, uh, mm -hmm. and then before Chloe was Indigo, 
and Indigo is a black lab. I always thought it was a funny name for, for a black dog. Um, so the, <laughs> but Indigo or Indy. And the last dog that we had that we named, um, it was our kids were like six, seven, eight years old. They were, they were pretty little. And we knew we were getting this puppy and we kept talking about names. And we had it down to three names. It was Scout, Crypto, and Ranger. And uh, we decided that we, we, we had those three names and then we would just go decide once we saw him. So we went to the, to the place to pick up the dog. We picked up the dog, this little puppy, and um, we all kind of simultaneously said Ranger. In fact, I have a Ranger. Ranger's been gone now for um, about six months. He lived I, I read him about, about your book, him, about him on your book too. I have a, yeah, there, I, bet, I bet you can't see this. This is a picture of my kids picking him up at, um, those are my kids holding the puppy in their arms. That was literally the day that we got them. So this is all in the, in the book, Good Boy, now available at your local bookstore, including Greenlight Books in lovely yeah, also, York City, the capital of the world. Is that, is Greenlight Books um, a, a web store? We have online stores, but they're closed right now as almost all stores are closed in New York, but we have a website at greenlightbookstore.com and you can get Jenny's book there and have it shipped just straight to your house. Oh, good. That's good. I was wondering how people could get a hold of it. Yes. I'll paste the link in the chat so people can find it there to buy it. And we appreciate the support. And Jenny's been a great supporter of indie bookstores. We are getting some questions about your book. I think some folks would like to hear you read from it at some point, but they're asking about um, different availability and editions, which I don't know the answer to in different languages that it's available. Is it an audio book or an ebook or? It is an audio book uh, and that's available right now. So today again is pub date for, um, uh, so it's the birthday of, of, of good boy. And uh, so as of today, you can buy it. You can buy it online from Greenlight. Uh, and you can also buy the audio book. I, um, I, I listen to the audio book because I can't read anymore since computers and telephones. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first, it's the first book that I had, did not do the reading. Somebody else. Yeah. Did, did I wonder why you did that. Well, you know, because it's really grueling to record an audio book. It's, yeah. it's like a week and a half. Yeah, it is. If first to see it to you, this will seem like nothing, but well, eight hours a day in a studio yeah. um, without making any mistakes. And if you make a mistake, they make you stop that second, you go back, you fix it. And yep. I just, I did, I've done four audio books, including um, She's Not There, which was my first, my first memoir, and my novel, um, Long Black Veil. Um, and it was really cool. I'm glad that my voice is there. People can hear my voice. Yeah. But... This one, I thought, well, hire somebody who is like a professional actress to do it. And the person they got was great. I forget her name, but she was yeah, yeah, she's really great. cool. She was great. I was just wondering. I was curious. Have you um, ever wanted to do an audio book? Do you have a book in you, Sia? Um, oh, one day I'll put something out. Um, I've got more things in the works, like um, TV shows and a movie. And so those are more things that... Um, and and the part the, the TV show is autobiographical, um, and that's pretty funny. And yeah, we're about to shoot a pilot for that. So, um, and that will be based on my life. But um, so because my it's my life is ridiculous, but nobody sees it because I don't do my own reality TV show. <laughs> it's always time. <laughs> Whoops! Excuse me. Like I, I know we've got a space for people I really, 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 really love and want to support. <laughs> you guys are so awesome. I'm sorry. I just want to let you keep talking. And we have so many questions. I'm trying to find some that have been asked a couple of times. So some people have asked um, for both of you, are there ways that dogs have inspired your work or has nature inspired your work? I guess other non-human creatures. Oh, yes. Do all my songs are about dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dingus. Dingus is here right now. I don't have Ranger, but I... Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> and look, Cereal's just in here. Cereal, do you want to come say hi to the camera? Cereal. Hi. Oh, my God. That's Cereal? Yeah, that's Cereal. That is an adorable puppy dog. I know. She just got a... She had an injury, so she had a, some, a pretty funny haircut. Um... And I, it makes me laugh because she's very, very gorgeous and absurd looking at the moment. 
I'm going to be petting her while you guys talk. I forgot what the question was. <laughs> oh, I lied and said all my, that's right, all my songs are about dogs. But I couldn't live without dogs. So, yes, there would be no music without dogs for me. I, I couldn't live without dogs. They, I live because of dogs. That's how I'm alive. <laughs> I mean, dogs, dogs know you. Uh, they they see something in us. I mean, I remember uh, here, this is a sad story, but after my father died, I remember I was just you know inconsolable. I was just crying and crying, and we had this kind of crazy dog named Brown. It's a chocolate lab, and Brown came over and just put her head on my lap and just kind of waited me out and waited me out and. Um, I'll never forget that moment. I mean, there are a lot of things that I went through that helped me get over grief, but and having, just having that conversation with that dog at that moment was so powerful. And I felt like, what's, I felt like, what's that, um, there's a phrase from the Bible that I, I, I changed, it was like, as if the dog was dyslexic saying, um, you know, do not be sad for I am thy dog. <laughs> he, <laughs> he who lives in, in dog, lives in love and he who lives in love lives in dog yeah. you can hear my scottish squeak to the right in the background too <laughs> pantera was like that for me i was suicidal uh let's see probably about 11 years 10 10 11 years ago um and he saved my life for sure he did something very strange he he crawled up my chest i've been crying and crying and i was writing suicide notes and he just he got on my neck. He was a, he was a little 17 pounder. He got on my neck and he started making this noise I've never heard before. And it was like enough to keep me on the planet because I thought he was saying to me, please don't kill me. And um, so I didn't. I called a friend and I was one of the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and started going to AA and, and all that stuff. And then life got better. But your dog is your dog is your is a witness to your life. And that's another thing about what I wanted to write about these seven dogs. It was kind of like like who were you know, who who was there except the dog was there when I was, you know, a nerd kid ra raising, you know, uh seahorses and venus flytraps in an aquarium you know who was there when 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 i was like you know i went through that same thing you went through although in a different way at a time in my life when I, you know i just as a transgender person i didn't know how i was going to be able to go on um and eventually i came home and there was the dog i have a a, a, a short little thing i thought i could read you um about this is kind of about this um and this is um, this part of it is is in the in the book. I call this piece too dark to read. Which do you know that line? Someone once asked Groucho Marx, um, "Who's who's your best friend?" And he said something like, um, "Outside of a outside of a outside of a book, no, outside of a dog, a book <laughs> is his best friend. Inside of a dog, it's too dark to read." So I call this too dark to read. Beautiful. After we lost Indigo, I got a call from the Bed and Biscuit. One of their customers was dying and her dog, Chloe, needed a home. Given our recent loss, they asked, might our family be interested in adopting her? They had to be kidding, I thought. After Indigo, we would never get another dog, ever. See, this is the opposite of the SIA approach. Mm -hmm. It had just been a few years earlier, it seemed, that Indigo, a black lab, had first barged through our door. Her underbelly showed the signs of a litter she'd recently delivered, and between the wise, droopy faces and the swinging dog teeth, she was a sight to behold. She had a nose for trouble. On one occasion, I came home to find that she'd eaten a five-pound bag of flour. <laughs> Covered in white powder and flour, paw prints were everywhere, including, incredibly, the countertops. <laughs> I asked the dog what the hell had happened, and Indy just looked at me with a glance that said, I can't imagine to what you are referring. <laughs> Time raced by. Our children grew up and went off to college. The mirror, which had showed a young mom, reflected a young mom when Indigo first arrived, 
now showed a woman in late middle age. I had surgery for cataracts. I began to lose my hearing. We all turned gray, me, my spouse, the dogs. In August, 2017, I took Indigo for one last walk. She was slow and unsteady on her paws. She looked up at me mournfully. You did take, say you'd take care of me when the time came, she said. You promised, Jenny. She died that summer, a tennis ball by her side. I told the bed and biscuit we were sorry, but we wouldn't be adopting any more dogs. Then, one morning, as I was passing by the bed and biscuit in my car, I pulled over. I could at least lay my eyes upon this, Chloe. What harm could it do? She had a soft face. When Chloe entered our house, she was cautious, uncertain. She spent hours that first day going to every corner, sniffing things out. Finally, she, she sat down by the fireplace and gave me a look. If you wanted, she said, I would stay with you. It's so beautiful. I know I cried during that. I wish there was coffee in here right now. I know, me too. I got an empty one. <laughs> See, it looks so peaceful there. Are you sitting on a porch? Yeah, I'm sitting on a porch. I'm sitting on a porch and I got a pillow under my bum on a, and this fun little chair that you can see in the background is made of string. And um, I got I have a beautiful view and uh, I really couldn't ask for more. I'm a very lucky person. Oh, look at that. You, you didn't see that, but somebody no, what happened? grabbed my coffee cup. Oh, Here, tell him, tell him, tell him, come, come back. I... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh, no, where'd you go? Well, um, I'm still here, but we've lost our host, Jessica. Oh, wait, I'm no, back. Jessica's back. I didn't want to get in the way of your reading. That was so beautiful. Oh, thanks. Um, and, and a little weepy. But so now we have a, a little more lighthearted question. A, at least one person asked this great question. What do you think your dogs think about you? Oh, see, let me take that one. <laughs> they love me because I'm really nice to them. <laughs> um, uh, the, all your dogs love you. Of course, they love you. You're, they love they love their owner. They love you. If you pet them, they just want love and attention. They just beautiful little hurry slugs that want love <laughs> and attention. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a question for you, Sia. Do, do your dogs like music? Do they like your music? Do they want you to sing them? Well, in the beginning, they, they were scared because it sound. I know now that I read about it, um, that when I was singing, it sounded like I was howling and I was in pain. So they, they, they interpreted it as like, oh, gosh, we've got to comfort her. So they would um, get a little bit anxious, and then they just – grew to understand that it was actually was part of my routine <laughs> and so what do you like to, what do you like to sing to your dogs oh I, oh I I don't sing to my dogs I just talk to them um but uh Licky Licky's all was always in the um studio in the little tiny booth with me he would just curl oh, up God. yeah that's funny um, and I'm I have sure an old song called Lentil, which is about my dog and I did uh, about my first dog, and I didn't ever, I didn't have to put him down. Some people were worried because of the, the lyrics in the song. They thought I, I meant I had to put him down, but it wasn't that. It was that I'd fallen in love with him on a trip to Australia, and then I wasn't allowed to bring him back to England because of uh, he didn't have all the right shots and everything. And then he ended up. Um, with the nicest family ever and a little girl. And I went back there to get him and I couldn't because she was so attached to him. And so it was heartbreaking, but that was, that was mental. <laughs> I had to let, I had to let him go because I knew he'd have a better life with them than a touring musician who wasn't making any money and could not afford to, you know, to take my dogs with me on tour and stuff right. like that. I mean, that's the whole thing. That's like a level of celebrity of people who like, you know, their dogs come along. They have the entourage yeah. whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I, now my dogs come everywhere with me. <laughs> but I don't go anywhere. <laughs> uh -huh, you see, the system works. <laughs> I, if I was going anywhere for more than five days, I would take them. And I won't go anywhere where they're not allowed. 
and I won't go on holiday for more than eight days maximum um, because I miss them too much. So that's those are my. Li I've got a whole bunch of boundaries that I've I've set for myself. Hey. Jenny, well, here's a good question for you, if you don't yeah. mind. Um, Annabelle asks, you've written other memoirs in the past. What makes Good Boy different? And why did you want to write Good Boy now? Oh, you know, I started working on this book like four years ago. I don't even remember why I started now. But <laughs> I think, um, well, not every story um, about transgender people has to be a story about transition I think that that's become the cliche yeah. and there's there's so many different kinds of transgender lives and I wanted to kind of celebrate them um I think it's also that um you know I've been I'm almost 20 years um since transition now, in fact I'm over 20 years since transition now and um it's my my younger life is starting to get more and more distant and I'm trying to re it's getting harder to remember what things were like back in the day so, <laughs> I, I wanted to, it's kind of like, I think about boyhood and manhood in, in the way that if you were an expatriate, if you, if you were born somewhere else and you now you live somewhere else, kind of the way you think about the old country. I mean, I don't want to go back and live there in the old country. Like, I, I like living here, but it doesn't mean I don't dream of the old country. It doesn't mean I don't think about the place where I started my life. Yeah. And to and have respect for that person. Yeah, and to make peace with to make peace with it all. Um, also, I, I think I said earlier, dogs let you talk about two things that are hard to talk about: love and loss. Um, mm -hmm. They we give our whole hearts to our dogs, and then our hearts break because the dogs don't live forever. And um, I mean, what more important things are there for an artist to write about or to make music about, except for the love Lots. in your heart and how to survive? sadness yeah um uh, someone asked me have i ever canceled a show because i couldn't bring my dog i actually fired my uh, management of 10 or 12 years because they told me that i couldn't bring my dogs on tour and i said that's actually absolutely none of your business and if the band is okay with it then i'm bringing them and then i fired them <laughs> immediately wow <laughs> Um, and because the band, the band was totally fine with having the dogs on tour, and I, it was was absolutely bizarre. I was like, "You work for me. You don't tell me that whether I can take my dogs on fucking tour." Maybe it was just the person who was not a dog lover. Who, who? I haven't met many of them, but I do. I know they do exist out there. Oh, it's my son. He's calling me. Hang on. <laughs> oh my god! It's my because I had adopted a um, a teenager. Hang on. Shit. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to answer it, and I don't know how to not accept it. It's going to my bed. Thank you. I love the song, though. That's great. You should... Will you answer it, though, Adam? Just so he knows he's not alone? <laughs> yeah, see, you should do a... a, a tune. You should use that that little tune yeah, as a, you know, make, make a loop out of that. And... Oh, I do that with Playtime. That's my favorite um, uh, um, iPhone ringtone it goes and i do that's what i do over it and it's my favorite there was there was a band in the 90s called the penguin cafe orchestra they had a tune that was based on like um that like the busy signal you get in the uk anyway We've had a lot of people asking for you to sing, so thanks for indulging. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay, I'd be well, happy to sing. Thank you for asking. Would oh, they like me to sing? Oh, oh, you don't mean? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, we have time for maybe a couple more questions. Um, do you want a silly one or a serious one? Oh, silly. What was that, Sia? Oh, I just said I can't see the questions anymore. Just sorry, sorry oh, okay. for any of the people online. I can't see the. I don't, I don't know what happened when that's my, fine. My son tried to FaceTime me. It, I lost everything. <laughs> that's okay. I can give you guys a couple more. Do you want a silly one or a serious one? How about one of each? One of each. Yeah. Okay. Um, the silly one is if you were a dog, what kind of dog would you be? I don't know if it's what kind of dog would you want to be or what do you imagine you would be? <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. I think I look a little bit like an Afghan. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, <laughs> with, the, with the hair. Um, but I, I don't mean, really like Afghans I much. I would just be a big, really lazy slug dog. A big, lazy just slug like, dog. Just like a furry handbag. Just like, take me with you wherever you go, please. Um, now let's snuggle more times. Let's snuggle all the time. I, and you would call me Klingon. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> What about yeah, you, Jenny Afghan? I don't, I don't know what kind of dog I'd be. Um, I'd be a I mean, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of like a dog now, you know. I'm I'm very, you know. I mean, if you ask my wife, like when she when she leaves the house, I'm like, oh, are you ever coming back? You're never coming back. Oh, I'm gonna be so lonely. And then she comes back, and I'm like, oh, I'm so glad you're back. Oh, it's so <laughs> wonderful. To get and, at, and at the end of the day, like she always, Didi always falls asleep first. Uh, Didi, do you wanna do you wanna wave? in the camera yeah. or she says no <laughs> okay that's okay like at the, at the end of the day um you know she turns off the light first and i'm like oh really the day is over like, <laughs> we have so many more, but there's more stories to tell there's more stuff to do and she's like oh, really i'll be here tomorrow morning really <laughs> so i think i think whatever kind of dog i think i already am that dog <laughs> Uh, I need to scratch. Sounds like a preoccupied attachment style. <laughs> if you ever were interested to Google preoccupied attachment strategy or style, that that would be interesting. If you might learn, learn some sound, stuff about yourself. It doesn't it's, sound healthy. Is it a good thing? I think I, whatever. No, it's not unflattering. It's we all have different <laughs> strategies, and um, so I was I I'm just oh well I was disorganized, but then I which used to be called fearful avoidant. But then uh, it was changed to disorganized, um, and I've been working with with uh, uh, meditation protocols on attachment repair, and now I'm mostly secure. So that's pretty cool. Oh, but secure, I, isn't that the goal? That is the goal. There's secure, dismissive, preoccupied, um, and disorganized and unresolved. But. So, but a fearful avoidant, like which is me, disorganized, they have bits of dismissive and bits of preoccupied. <laughs> They're basically double winners. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, how about one more and then we'll wrap this up? Okay. Um, well, I combining kind of a couple different people's questions, a couple people have asked about self care and some who are trans folks or from the LGBT community or who are just feeling right now in the middle of a pandemic that like they're feeling anxious or afraid. Obviously dogs are one of the answers, but I wonder if you guys could talk a little bit more about what you do for self-care. Oh. You, you want to go first? Or? First off, if, if you're feeling um, upset and lonely and worried right now, um, you should know that it's not just you. I think the whole world right now is in a bad place and people who have these issues, um, are, are feeling it really hard, but I think everybody's feeling it right now. So the, the, the first thing you need to know is that it's not just you. I don't yeah. know if that, will, if that will raise your spirits. It might not raise your spirits, but it's good to know that it doesn't, it, it's not because you're crazy. It's that this time we're living through right now really sucks. And the most well-adjusted person in the world right now is still suffering a little bit and some of us a lot. So that's one thing. Um, when I, I don't usually, I mean, I'm not a mental health professional, so I try not to give advice, but I, I do, if I, whenever I'm asked to give advice, I always try to remember T-R-U-E, true. And T stands for talk. So talk to somebody. Um, it doesn't have to be your parents. It doesn't have to be your best friend. It could be a, a near stranger, but don't carry it alone. Um, R stands for read. So find I mean, if you're trans or, or something, find out more about the thing that you have so that you can become educated about what, what people do and what people have done and understand where you fit into um, the, the tradition and the history of people who's, who've had the same struggle. Um, also read because it's a great escape. Read fantasy, read Lord of the Rings, um, read a mystery story, read something that will bring you joy. A little golden book. Exactly. The, 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 what is it? The something, something puppy? 
<laughs> uh, pokey little puppy, the pokey, pokey little, little puppy. puppy. U, T-R-U-E, U stands for you, you, you be you. You don't have to be somebody else. Be you, whoever that's going to be. And if you can't be you and the person you want to be right now, try to know that in time you can become you. And E, T-R-U-E, the E stands for euphoria or ecstasy. And try to, to know that there is such a thing as happiness, that you deserve it. It is waiting for you. If you can't find it today, don't beat yourself up, but know that it's out there and it will come to you in time with patience and with love. So that's, those, that's my four-step my four-step program. I, I have an acronym too. Is that what it's called? Um, yeah. uh, uh, so mine is an old 12-step number. It's called HALT, H-A-L-T, Hungry, Angry, Lonely, Tired. So it's to check in with yourself, whether you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. And then uh, in my case, it's always just that I'm lonely. So I just, I, my, my suggestion is the connection is the opposite, um, is the solution to everything. Um, sadness to fear um, to addiction and that uh, by c connecting with uh, your friends and FaceTime texting is fine but better than that is getting on the phone and having a phone call and even better than that is is FaceTiming and these are all things that are regulating for your brain and that we absolutely need science it has proven we absolutely need co-regulation with another human being on a daily basis um, to, for our, to be mentally healthy. There you have it, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you both so much. This has been super amazing about dogs and so much more. Um, mm -hmm. We pasted the link again to get Jenny's book in the chat. You can also go to greenlightbookstore.com and get a lot of recommendations if you need something for that R in true. We're there for you. Um, <laughs> Jennifer Finney Boylan, you are a fantastic author and human being, and we love you and appreciate you. Sia, we are so, so, so grateful to you for being here. Um, check out the rest of Jenny's tour. She's going to be at some different bookstores virtually later this week. And I hope you guys have a great evening, Thanks. great afternoon. Yeah, see ya. I love you. I love you. I love you, all the fan peoples. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for coming. Have a great yeah. night. Bye, sweetie. Bye, Bye Sia.